A reading from John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love that throwback to our children singing in 2015, because don't we all need to be reminded of that in the midst of it all? He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got everybody here in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Those little voices were just a balm to my soul and a gift to my spirit in this year in which the whole world seems to have been shaken. He's got the whole world in his hands. Do you remember back to last Monday, Thursday, and we were just beginning this online season and I shared with you then a short video clip from Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Maybe you remember the clip well. You see at a time when racial tensions were at a height in this nation, Mr. Rogers welcomed Officer Clemens to soak his feet in the tiny pool in Mr. Rogers backyard. And you remember what he did of course. He gave up his seat he shared the water. He took up the towel. He dried Officer Clemens' feet, and without having to say so much as a word, he modeled the love of Christ. There are so many ways to say, I love you. You'll find so many ways to say, I love you. I had no idea back last Monday, Thursday, about the increase in racial tensions that we would experience over this last year. Together with the pandemic, that struggle has dominated our headlines. And I have often replayed that Mr. Rogers clip in my mind and the power 
power of that small, subversive act of friendship. In simple acts of friendship, we model the power of the love of Christ to change the world, one person at a time. And it's hard to throw stones when you are washing feet. Monday, Thursday teaches us about many things, and one of those things is friendship, holy friendship. We read just a part of the story tonight from John 13, but if you want to read the full story in John, you'll need to read from chapters 13 through 17. Read it all together and you'll see. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. He gives them a new commandment. He promises the gift of the Spirit. He calls them to abide. And ever so tenderly, he says these parting words, I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. I have called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. He calls them his friends, Jesus calls them his friends, and Jesus calls us his friends too. I don't know about you, but it is true for me that some of my friendships have been really stretched during this time of pandemic. Friendships have been stretched just by sheer physical distance. It has been hard and it has been heartbreaking not to see one another for so many, many months right? And friendships have been stretched by political differences, one side of the aisle or the other, divisions that have been exacerbated, I know, by the quick zing and ping of social media. Friendships have been stretched by varying approaches to the pandemic, mask or anti-mask. Don't give in to fear, versus let's just approach this time with caution. Perhaps you felt a similar stress and strain in your own life, in your own friendships. Perhaps we need this Monday, Thursday time to be centered once again in holy friendship and to be reminded that being a friend of Jesus that changes all our other relationships. How might this holy friendship to which Jesus calls us both stretch us and heal us? Now we know for sure that Jesus and his disciples did not agree on everything. The disciples wanted to shoo away the little children and instead, Jesus placed them at the center and said, unless you become as a little child. The disciples wanted Jesus to take the world by storm. And Jesus chose to enter the seat of political power on a borrowed donkey. The disciples wanted Jesus to be careful with the people he associated with, with the boundaries he crossed, with the ones he chose to serve. And Jesus, Jesus held their feet in his hands, those same feet that followed and hesitated, and he wiped them clean, and he commissioned them for service. It's hard to throw stones when you are washing feet. Being a friend of Jesus stretches us to see and encounter the world in new ways, humble, loving, serving, boundary-crossing ways, which ultimately bring about the healing and reconciliation for which we ache, for which we long and for which we pray. 
as his earthly time drew short. This is what Jesus wanted his friends to know, to remember, to emulate, how he wanted them to live in the world. Jesus wasn't naive about it. On this very night, he told them, in this world, you will have trouble. But nevertheless, this is the new commandment. As I have loved you, now love one another. This is how people will know that you are my disciples. It's hard to throw stones when you are washing feet. Our work now, it seems, love and serve, heal and bless, eat from the bread, drink from the cup. Jesus says, remember who I am so that you may remember who you are, my friends, my beloved friends. This day, may we remember and never forget. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since Jesus has called us his friends, we offer him our prayers before joining together in communion. With the confidence we have as the children of God, let us now turn our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you made us in your image. You claimed us as your people and made a covenant to be our God. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn back to your ways. You accept us, love us, and care for us. You hold us in your hands. We are your beloved friends. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, so now from our homes, let us remember. Let us remember how on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And after he had given thanks to God as we have done, he blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. It's poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Therefore, every time we eat the bread 
and drink from the cup. We remember the saving love of Christ until he comes again to gather all of his children home. Now I invite you to share in the elements which you have gathered. And as we join in communion, we listen to words of praise, words of invitation. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the waters. Put your hand in the, in the hands of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself and you may look at others differently when you put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Your friend, my friend, our beloved Jesus. Yeah. 
Now let us pray together. Let us pray. Holy, gracious God, on this Monday, Thursday, we remember. We remember that you have commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. So help us to do it well. May the gift of this sacrament strengthen us for the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My beloved friends, beloved friends of Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon and abide with you on this holy day and forever and ever. Amen and amen.